Welcome guys to another stream here for Phoenix Rice Ace Attorney here on Throwback Thursday. And uh, hopefully, we should easily be able to do it. We should finish up with uh, the trial for what I'm calling hashtag free edge work. And get ourselves uh, a little more information where I'm thinking a lot of information here on the uh, DL6 case. Oh, for a second there, I didn't have a uh, game audio. If you do have game audio, I'm good. Okay. So, with that, let's get right back into this game because I want to make sure we get on a uh, we get on episode five by the end of this stream, hopefully. I should say start episode five by the end of the stream, hopefully. Yes. December 27th, 2 11 p.m. Right in Co Law Offices. Oh, here we go. Now I gotta find, uh, gotta find Maya's voice again like normal, which uh, is never uh, an easy task. Normally the hardest task when we uh, stream these games. Hey, Jan, welcome to the stream, man. I am good. Uh, caught a little bit of Blackjack stream early today before the stream, and uh, yeah, that was about the exciting part of my day other than commentary. That's about it. Hopefully you had a good day, along with anybody else who uh, tunes into the stream. What was Mr. Wait, no, that wasn't it. Where is it? I gotta find the high pitch. Nick, there we go. Found it. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Yeah, been fajitas for dinner and got a new pair of wireless earbuds. Bro, you had a good day. You had one fajitas, and two, you got some new head. You got some new earbuds. There you go. That's a good day right there. Mainly the fajitas. That sounds delicious. Although I got no chicken or steak. Those are the real questions here. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? We had chicken, but I'm good with either. Hey, that that's the right way to do it, is be good with either. That chicken's good, man. I had me a nice, uh, a nice double quarter pounder with cheese for lunch. I, you can guess that I felt really, uh, <laughs> really out of shape after that. Especially both together. Oh, yeah. Some chicken and steak together in a fajita. Mm. I'm gonna be hungry by the end of this stream. That's never a good thing late at night. I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he never takes someone's life. Never. Nick! Oh, man. Larry, you had to come in here already? Like, yo, man. How's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today, man? I had him swooning in the aisles. Huh, Maya? Oh, Lord. S swooning? Me? Oh. Oh, yes. I do remember feeling faint. Um. Time out. Time out. Uh, did Maya just state that she was swooning over Larry? Please tell me that is not what just happened. Because if so... Ew. You know, had to, had to get that out of the system there for a second. I had to do it. I had to do it. Like right on, man. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight. Am I right, man? That's um. Nine one one. It may be Japan. Still, no, Larry. Like right, Nick. Huh? huh? 
Me? I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. Can we quit trying to make Larry feel good about himself? Can we please stop this? I don't like this game. Like, I think you can do better than that. Come on, man. I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy! Like, you guys should be bowing before me, man. Yeah, bow before your hero. What happened to Larry? He now got it. He's now the narcissist gimmick. Come on, his last name is Butts. Give him something. You can only give a man with the last name Butts so much. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Oh, uh, Lord. Woo. Hey, Chuck Jack in the stream today. Uh, just in time for Shaggy to cry. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, man. If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. I don't know how to laugh in the Shaggy voice. I legitimately don't. Like, but seriously, Nick? That boat shop caretaker, man! He's pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. I almost said dude. He almost turned into a shaggy cosplay of Hulk Hogan. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Like, hey, man. I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. Actually, that's more us. But from where I was sitting, man, Edgy seemed pretty. You know, edgy. I mean, come on, man. Can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Uh-oh. I think Larry started uh, started getting us to second-guess ourselves. Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Like us two, man. Are you sure you're not seeing double vision, Nick? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? No, nah, man. He means me. Right, Nick? Like, come on, dude. Say your prayers and eat your vegetables, man. When you're in the NWO, you're in the NWO for life, dude. I officially now want to just read a bunch of old Hulk Hogan promos as Shaggy. I think that would be fun as hell. Yeah, you, Larry. Not... Me? But... But why you, Larry? Like, oh, man. Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Hmm. Enough with the silent treatment. This is why you don't pick favorites. Because then the other ones get upset. Nick! Why do you trust Mr. Edward so much? I mean, he's changed recently. True. But when he first, but when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? I mean, he was kind of a pompous prick when we first met him. But uh, he, he's been he's been one half of a great tag team lately. 
Yeah, like when you pick AEW over NXT or the other way around, the other side gets upset, yeah? Very true. When you pick any wrestling promotion over another one, another side gets upset. You didn't know him back then. Back when we wanted to become a def back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes. In grade school. Cue the flashback. They saved me. Miles. And Larry. They saved me. And I'll never forget it. I just want good matches. Yeah, that, that's what we all should want. Good matches and storytelling. That's all it takes. And some really well-created documentaries that give you a good, hard look behind the scenes of a longtime character who you never really have seen talk much outside of character aka Mark Calloway the Undertaker if you have not watched any of the last ride on uh, the WWE Network I highly recommend it oh my god whoo whoo part three was good part four is gonna be even crazier man oh yeah you see Naya may have injured Kyrie yes I saw and I was upset I was quite upset because that would be the third time. The third time she has injured Kyrie. Because she banged her up a bit uh, off that botched power bomb. Apparently it's 50 50 if it's a major injury or not. Hopefully it's more on the latter side of that. Because, uh. I mean, I really don't want Kyrie to be any more hurt than she's already been the past year. She's had to deal with a lot of injuries, the concussion. That was really it, but it, it took her out for a while. Whew. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey Larry, what's he talking about? Kyrie is injured, now he needs to go back to the performance center. It really kind of sucks because with wrestling, like, it could be either or. But it, it is blatantly obvious that Nia is just very unsafe. And it really kind of sucks because Nia is pretty solid. But she just seems very unsafe. Even if it's accidental. Either that or she's got the worst luck. Like, huh? Huh? Um, oh, shit, man. Er, sorry, man. I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay. Okay. Story time with Phoenix Wright. Coming up. Not as good as story time with Adam Cole, baby, but still coming up. Kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring. End of third grade. A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. And it happened to all of them. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. In an envelope? In an envelope. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait, whatever. 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 Just caused at least eight injuries. No, Nice caused at least eight injuries, and quite a few of them were on Kyrie. Yeah. 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 That don't make me happy. Huh? I see. Anyway, 
This kid's envelope disappeared. With 38 bucks still inside. So baby, Kimbaya and Kairi far away from each other. That's gonna be tough with her feud with Asuka. Like, oh yeah! Now that you mention it, man, I do remember that! I can see why you'd forget. Or, I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. God, please don't injure Asuka. We can only hope Asuka is, uh, just too good for Naya to injure. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. Isn't that always when things get stolen? I feel like I was in high school and people got shit stolen from their gym lockers. All the time. I mean, all the time. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in the class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. Kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day, we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. Look at young Phoenix Wright. He kept the same hairstyle. Wait, what's young Phoenix Wright sound like? I... I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! He did Give the money back! You're such a meanie! Such a minute! You can't hide the truth! Tell us the truth! We're not gonna play with you anymore! You shouldn't be allowed in a relay race! Give me back my 50 cents I loaned you. <laughs> I love how those kept going from actual like, hey, he did wrong. And then it turned into, we don't like you anymore. And then it turned into that one kid who knows him. And it's just like, give me back the 50 cents. <laughs> oh, that's like the best, man. That's so real. What school has trials with students watching? What? Apparently they did uh, in Phoenix's school. In third grade. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. Oh, young Phoenix, right. I, I didn't know what, I didn't know what, I, I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. Hey, don't, don't, don't get on his hairline. Don't insult a man about his hairline. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't wait, no. What what would young young Edgeworth? Um uh, uh who He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M Miles. Oh, he got a bow tie and everything. Look at little Miles. <laughs> He's got a really big, he got a big mouth too. Uh, little Miles Edgeworth. Not as dominant on the football field as little Jordy Watkins, but, uh, you know, he can handle himself in the courtroom. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No! Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. But... Is the teacher a female? I've been giving her a 
A masculine voice, eh? It's gonna continue. But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Oh, Lord. <laughs> like, this is always how it go. How it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person, man. <laughs> just think how he feels. Like he said he didn't do it, man. So he didn't do it. I like that he has a band-aid on his knee. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happened. That's how I met your mother. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. They were the best of friends that anyone could have. They were the best of friends that anyone could have. Chris Jericho said Jim Cornette doesn't have a soul. <laughs> he isn't wrong. Yeah, Cornette's uh, whole tirade over the stadium stampede. I understand somebody not liking something about wrestling, but he's <laughs> he went way too far with how much he hates AEW. I, I get not liking something, but man. His comments were way overblown. Wow. I had no idea. Like, yeah, man. I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. I learned that a long time too, Phoenix. But I enjoy it. It's nice and soothing. Very uh, comforting. Turn on some tunes. Just lay back. Totally alone. Without a friend in the world. Just, I read the sentence before I was about to say it. And the fact that a good thing and Larry are used in the same sentence makes no sense. You did a good thing, Larry. I also saw a thing that and it said that AEW isn't bringing no-name indie wrestlers in, and that, and that got me heated. Watch AEW Dark, you'll see, you'll see the no-names. Well, keep in mind, AEW Dark is technically dark matches, so some of those guys probably aren't signed. So, they may not be bringing in no-name indie guys, but they are giving guys a chance to showcase themselves. So, you could say they're not bringing in no-name indie guys, but, you know, they're at least giving guys tryout matches of some some sort. Ooh. Like, um, yeah, well, man, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it, man. So... I, like, took it kind of personally, you see. When something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the class trial. They're exposing them to other promotions. Shit, uh, Serpentine... Serpent Tice and uh, Christy James got pay-per-view appearance deals because of Dark. That's good. Oh, Serpentico. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say, I'm like, who's Serpent Tice? Serpentico. Yeah. Yeah, I saw he got a, a pay-per-view deal. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. Chrissy was on Dynamite last night. Oh, good for her. 
I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. He lost to Akaru, but it wasn't a squash at least. Yeah. Yeah, hey, as long as you're not getting beaten in like two minutes by one finish that literally is used in the first second of the mo of the match, it's always a good thing. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. I mean, he did somewhat do all of those things. So, it's not wrong. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Once again, don't really think that article was wrong. Like the why, man? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all, man. <clears throat> Whew. Shaggy was doing some damage today. That's what I thought, too. Tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. Never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. Wanted to meet him. To learn why he'd become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait! You don't mean... That's why... That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? Edge, <laughs> edgy was being edgy. Very much so. I love that's the reasoning, though, behind Phoenix becoming a defense attorney. He just wanted to meet Edgeworth again. He just wanted to see his old friend. That, that, that's really cool. I love that. If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. He wanted to reunite the tag team, yep. Anything it took to get uh, to get the, the edge right tag team back. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. The only one who knows the real Edgeworth. The only one who can help him. Like, whoa! Nick! Like, so, so is, is that why you helped me out for free, man? Just like when DX returned in the late 2000s. Uh, but this one's gonna be more like the original. Uh, yeah. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, man, Nick. 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 We have to save Mr. Edgeworth. If it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. Very well, maybe. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clear out some of this evidence I no longer need. Ooh, yay, that's cool. I like that. <clears throat> Gotta clear that throat. Okay, let's go. Oh, uh, I should say... 
uh, clearing my throat reminded me since, you know, doing voice acting here. Uh, we will be jumping into Detroit tomorrow. Uh, Detroit Become Human. I flipped a coin to pick between Detroit and Kingdom Hearts, and Detroit won the coin, coin toss. So we will jump into Detroit Become Human uh, tomorrow night. So, there you go. That's uh, that's the heads up of uh, what we're streaming for tomorrow and might become the main game. Now, I'm expecting to be really, really into it. So, it probably will be our main game. December 27th, Gord Lake Park entrance. Oh, he's back. Hey, pal. Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Unless you kill everyone off. I'm not going to say yes or no to that. Because it's definitely a possibility. Close one today, eh? I got so worked up, snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to use. We now know. We now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you as a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now, I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gimshu sure is. Um, active today. Oh, there's one other thing. Eek. No one can go into the woods today. There's a man in the woods. The woods? Where Lada was camping? The woods are off limits to camping. Apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lada's in a lot of trouble. Maya making puns. Anyways, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Well then. That's no fun. Number 27th, Gord Lake Public Beach. Okay. Okay. Need to. There, there needs to be somehow. Up, up, down, down needs to have their own emotes. So you can have like a. Uh, an aha! Emote. Man, those Uno videos are the best thing ever. I'm just saying, if you haven't watched them, you should go watch them. Huh. Steel Eyesore is missing. Eyesore! Looks like the hot dog stand is closed, too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. You got gifted a sub, so you got a bunch of new em emojis. That's a, hey, that's great. Congrats, Jared. Guess Larry has today off. He was pretty happy about saving Mr. Edgeworth. True. We owe him big. Oh, pfft. you got that bot before I even saw what he put in there. That was quick, man. I look over at the chat and all I see is one message was deleted by moderator. Jaren, you, you are on your game today. Good job. Good job, man. That old caretaker got away. Yep. 
I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Uh, hello. You might. Um, what might you be doing here? <laughs> A full walk. Oh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. You see? Stabby, stabby. You know what, Jerem? Maybe uh, once we get more emotes. Uh, once, like, if we can get some more subscriptions here on the channel. I will, uh, I will give you your own emote. I will create a stabby, stabby emote. Mr. Grossberg? This is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edward's trial ends tomorrow. Um, that is true, yes. <laughs> but from what I saw of today's trial, Edward should be fine, mate. Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? December 27th, go take a check. We're gonna talk to a parrot. Nobody's home. Ra? Hello. Ra? Hello. Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Ra? Hello. Ra? Hello. I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parent to fend for herself. Can only read that so much. Maybe I should take care of Polly. Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't ju you probably shouldn't just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Would you kidnap a parrot? I shouldn't be asking that. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. He says I can't take you. Great. Now the bird's going to hate me. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? Ra? One, two, two, eight. Ra? Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. But hey, it keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. You see J.J. Watt is in talking contract extensions? I have not seen that. I would have... Not gonna lie, I would expect him to maybe retire sooner than later. Dude's injury prone as all hell, and he's gonna get hurt this year too, I'm sure. Or he'll go join his brothers in Pittsburgh. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aww. Boring! Hmm. There's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick, Nick, Nick? Why would Mr. Edgeworth 
Shrek's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says, this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. And whoever wrote this sounds a lot like Von Karma. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. I mean, I would just want out of Houston. Maybe JJ should take Deshaun, Deshaun with him somewhere. That would be one big deal. You'd have to trade a lot for that. Pulling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here. In perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know. But it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hamon and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. But who could have written the letter? And what does it mean to... Get revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Look, I don't know, okay? Well, one thing's for certain. Ooh, this letter is an amazing clue. Saved Deshaun from Bill O'Brien's madness. I mean, hell, he's, all, he's been talking contract extension, so you might not be getting away from that madness. That fishing pole looks expensive. Maybe we should bring it to Detective Gumshoe. Don't you think the caretaker would mind? Well, we can just leave him a mail detector in exchange. Um, maybe we'd better not. Off to the police department. Hmm. Looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. But Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. Oh? Really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow or something like that. I didn't pay attention. Boat shop caretaker? He shouted something about catching him if it's the last thing I do, pal. I don't know. And he sounds real New Yorker-ish. It's, it's this weird thing. Good luck, gumshoe. Well then. Hi, Miles. What's up? You look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? The trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. This is too perfect in my Madden franchise. They dig Nick is 69 over. I will say, uh, I think he's like a 70 or 71 in uh, the Jags franchise right now. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, 
It does sound like the kind of thing you do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So... Simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah. But... I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me. And you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right? But I'm not that good of a person. Hell yeah, 60 buck game on Steam is on sale for 20. Find that real quick. As you do. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes. That man trapped... That, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. That's the caretaker! He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hamon. On that day, 15 years ago, three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we, re when we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I'd lost all memory of the murder. I gotta do something real quick here with the camera. I'll fix this up. Oop, I got you do it. Ah, let's see. Yeah, that's good. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed Yanni Yogi had, had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen depravity. Or deprivation. There we go. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher. A man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things, in court, in his personal life. He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Would you call him Mr. Perfect? Oh, no, he's not Kurt Henning. Perfectly? Huh. In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent. Ever. But... But that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well yeah. It's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um Edgeworth? 
what you're saying is true. You're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He, he's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgewood! Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of a safe in the shack where the boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge? On me. Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant? You got declared guilty or something? Nice, right. But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter, then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Haman. It also says, this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait. That old man. Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Yogi? The suspect in the D in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. Yanni Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. He just happened to be in the elevator to we just happened to be in the elevator together. 15 years ago. And then the earthquake! The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for, we were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. Woo. We became unsettled. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I say quiet, you're not making this any easier. I wanna get out, help, get us out. Don't shout, you just use up more oxygen. That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. Whew. Dear Lord, I'm yawning way too much this early in the game. In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh. But isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgewood. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I don't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? Yeah, we've already been over this. I think, I think 
think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. Whew. Yeah, I'm already on it. Man, I've been tired most of the day. I don't know why. I've just been, like, tired for most of the day. And I got, I got a good amount of sleep. So, I even took, not really a nap, but, like, laid down and took a tiny bit of a nap. Like, I don't get why I'm tired. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing. In the dark. Hey, help, I can't breathe. Quiet. Sit quiet. You're not making this any easier. I want to get out. Help. Get out. Don't shout. You just use up more oxygen. I... I can't breathe. You... You're using up my air! W what Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! Oh... What? What are you doing? Stop breathing my air! How can he breathe with no air? Oh man, what was young, uh... I've already forgotten young... Uh... Miles. No! Father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. Don't know if it was evidence from the day in court or the bailiffs. In the days I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! So Miles has a nightmare where he murders the man who essentially, well, who he believes, killed his father. <laughs> and with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but, it's just a dream, right? Right? Most Joey Wheeler line, line ever. I think I'm scared, I'm... I think I'm scared, I'm huge. I'm huge. That, th that thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth. You... You mean... It was me. I was the true criminal DL6. I shot my father. Um... How can I put this, uh, ooh, how can I put this lightly? Uh, mm, you're going to still have to go to jail, Edgeworth, I'm sorry. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. There's something else. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6. I know who you're talking about, and that's exactly where we're going. The 
December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. M Mr. Grossberg. Oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what's happening, hmm? It, Mr. Edgeworth, he, he, I see. So, so Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father? It's a, only a dream, only a dream. I wonder... What? If that's the case, then why do... Why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well... Also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to summarize that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was... Not a dream. It was real. As you imagine. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. I, no! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irreconcilable. Irrevocably wrecked. There we go. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitations so close. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds... Trite? Yeah. It sounds straight, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fay. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. <coughs> Voices are not doing my throat any, uh, any positives this week, apparently. The result? He was a perfect win record. He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. They got a thing for uh, female names with him. I'm Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Edgeworth must have known who shot him. Nami Yogi, no. Sadly, no, it is not Etel. I don't believe it, or I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you, but a possibility nonetheless. Um. 
Oh, so this is the letter. It seems that Yoki was following his, following this letter when he killed Himan. But why kill Robert Himan? Himan was a skilled defense attorney, but he defeated clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite difficult. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially, he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand soon enough. Wait, what is it? This letter, I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Maybe it was Yami Yogi? Yami Yogi, you claim he wrote himself this letter then followed his own instructions. Um, yeah, I guess that would be what happened. Perhaps you should think, perhaps you should think Mr. Yogi was a split, has a split personality. Hmm. I think that's definitely a, po I think that's definitely a possibility. Yes. Hmm. No, I think not. I do not know this Yogi in any case. There's no way I would recognize his handwriting. Oh, right. Yes, right. I ask you again. Do you have any idea who wrote this? Hmm. Could it be Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm. Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means that the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred Von Karma himself. What does this mean, then? Why would Von Karma want to frame Edgeway? Well, if it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know what Miles Edgeworth had accidentally know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. We'll press the point until the course court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But, but, how could Von Karman know about Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both present and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth, Stan, and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma had ever received in his career as a prosecutor. 
Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow! Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. Took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea? Or, uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe! You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a, quite a lot. Oh, Lord. I don't know why I am just... tiring out way too quick. Worst comes to worst, I want to get at least another hour in before I even think about calling it quits for today. But... I'm going to try and get through all three hours of this, or at least however long it's going to take us to get through this. Ah, if he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Eh. Von Karma is going to bring up DL6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is still murder, you know. I know that. I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But... But Nick! Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself! His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check it out. The police files might hold something to might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials. Hmm. to the police department. Where's our boy Gumshoe? Let me grab my back. I need to stretch my back out to have my... There's hardly anyone here! Well, must be out looking for the old guy. Yogi. Ah, it's you! I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now that I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But, guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. We can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes. He just arrived, actually. When Karma's in the records room. Nick! Let's hurry! Oh, man. It's in the 27th. Police department. Records room. Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma! Shut 
shelf stuff away. Case files in the back. In the back of the room, too. Forgotten cases, running away for a turn. Nick, let's get what we need and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. Your files have collected case reports. Quite a large volume of reports here. Wow, these are all case reports? Yeah, it's like a graveyard of police cases. I guess my sister's case report is in here too. Why are we gathering dust? This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons, others are question marks. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think this clothespin is for? Oh, a C-47? It's for uh, setting up all kinds of film stuff. Don't touch that, it's evidence. drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. Nick, the file for deal six. It's completely empty. W what? What are you doing in here? Von, or wait a minute. Von Karma. There we go. You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? What? What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? <clears throat> I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. You see how this guy was Edward's men or Edgeworth's mentor? your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father. Always second rate. Mr. Von, or Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory El Els Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney. Why? Because he dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival. That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you won't lose. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of... His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. 
You know what Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 in court tomorrow. Oh. So Von Karma is going to bring up the DL6 in court tomorrow. Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So, so you admit it? You! You wrote Mr. Yogi this letter! Yes, my dear defense lawyer. Thank you for taking the t trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? N Nick! What is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense. Usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will continue through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it. Usually. Now, give me the letter. No. No! Whoa, what are you? Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Out of my way! Wah! Everybody got tased. Oh, you got us. The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya. Is she okay? Maya? Maya? I think we have a kidnapping. Maya, open your eyes. Maya. The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Are you okay? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could. But one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. A no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Man. Maya. There has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya. She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? 
DL6 incident, evidence number seven, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember when Karma was holding this when Maya had jumped him. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. Prove it to you in court tomorrow. Woo! Well, we've been going an hour and a half. That's not long enough. We need to... Oh. really wanted to get through this, but just my body is just saying no. So as much as I hate to do it, uh, I'm gonna stop the stream here. I'm gonna stop the stream here. Uh, I got things to do anyways, uh, early in the morning uh, to get done. So I might as well just lay back, chill for a bit, then get some sleep. So I'm just gonna do that. We got through at least to the trial. I'll take that as a win. Uh, but Tomorrow, we'll get through Detroit. Hopefully, I'll be all jazzed up and ready to go for that. Uh, and we will hopefully get our full three hours of that in. So, so disappointed I couldn't give you guys uh, more in this stream. But when, uh, when I got days like this, when literally I am just essentially out of it right now, uh, we can't do much. But uh, I appreciate you being in here. Let me get you some good tunes to uh, end the stream with. We can at least get that going. And it will be, let's go. I'm going to go, uh, this is quite fitting. So with that, uh, that is the end of this stream. I will see you guys tomorrow for Detroit Become Human. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be much more lively and awake. I will see you guys tomorrow.